What, we some kind of suicide squad? I am Iron Man. You are a toy! I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Server Anakin! I have the high ground! I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm simply saying that life, uh, finds a way. Welcome back to the Big Movie Boys Podcast, the only podcast about movies that came out in 2020. I'm your host, Jeremy Ballman, and with me as always is Bob Liebel. What's up, everybody? How are we doing today? And Ben Stitch. Hey, guys. How are you feeling? I, uh, I know I'm a little nervous still about the Bills this upcoming week, and uh, I think we were going to talk real quick about our predictions from last week. I'm yes. pretty sure I was the closest. I, uh, I Jeremy, I might need you to ref- refresh my memory for last week's game against the Ravens. I don't recall you being the closest, Ben. What did you guess? I don't <laughs> I think, think you're I, guess, in, I think you're the farthest off. I think I said 31 28 or something like that. Yeah. Jerry, what'd you say? I want to say I said 27 24. I definitely didn't say the Ravens were going to score three points. I can tell you that. I think I remember mine. It was 34 um, 20. I also bet the over in that game. So, ooh, that did not age well. But we were all right that they won. We were. We were. And that's all that matters, Bill. Bills are moving on to the AFC Championship game this Sunday, but a uh, huge weekend. We got the Bills playing on Sunday in the AFC title game, and then we have Conor McGregor fighting Saturday night against Dustin Poirier, UFC 257, on Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. What are your boys' picks? I'm going McGregor, second round, TKO. Ben, or uh, Jeremy, what, what are you thinking? What's your guess? And then, we'll, and then next week, we can, we can see who got it right and who got it wrong again. And we'll hopefully, hopefully we'll be right. I'll be right at least. Yeah, I'll say uh, I'll say McGregor. Second round's tempting. I'm going to say third round, though. Ben, what do you got? You got upset special over there? Yeah, this one's an easy one for me. I'm, you guys know this. Uh, the listeners might, might not, but I host another podcast called The Big UFC Boys, and I'm, I'm huge in this stuff. I know you guys don't like it as much as I do, but... I'm a I'm bigger on uh, Justin po- Dustin. What's his <laughs> name? <laughs> you don't even know his name. <laughs> Dustin Por- Poirier. Yeah, yeah. I got him. Uh, him going in like the first minute. I got him beating McGregor in the first minute of the first round. Ben, I think you said the wrong title. I think you host the <laughs> "Fuck You, Conor McGregor" podcast. <laughs> That's right. I hate that guy. But we'll, we'll see next week who who got it right and who got it wrong. And if it's Ben, I'm going to be pretty pissed off. <laughs> if Ben's not on next week's episode. That'll be why. Bob beat him up. <laughs> but uh, before we get into... Uh, we got a great episode lined up, by the way. I'm genuinely very excited to talk about the movies we are talking about today. As always, want to give a little shout-out to at Big Movie Boys on Twitter and Instagram. We recently uh, let our intern have access to our Instagram account. He's been running it rather the last few days. I think he's doing a pretty good job, so... Show them some love and go follow those accounts. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, our intern has been doing a great job. Have to have to give it a uh, shout out to him. A great intern, an unpaid one at that too. It's not as bad when the workers are also unpaid. So <laughs> it's experience, Bob. You're earning experience. Put it on your That's resume. That's true. I will put that on my resume that I ran the, the Instagram account for the Big Movie Boys. But if you don't follow our accounts, you didn't listen to the end of last week's episode, you don't know what we're doing today, we're doing another double feature. This week we are watching Ants and A Bug's Life. And I made the joke last week, I made the joke on Twitter as well, two very similar movies that came out, not just in the same year, but 54 days apart from each other. Sobering to know that. Pretty crazy. Uh, blew my mind when I learned it. It's just, it's absolutely wild. It really is, if you think about it. it like, when did you expect these movies? Like, I, my, my guess, if you put a gun to my head, what what movie came out when? I'd say they were five years apart. Yeah, that, I would have probably guessed that too, had I not known. Especially after watching them. Like, even after watching them, I would not have said they came out less than two months apart. And so, that led to the question, how did this even happen? And... Ben was tasked with answering that question. Yeah, this was, I, I was interested in this for sure. And I found this from uh, denofgeek.com. So take, that sounds like a, a real website. A hugely reliable source. <laughs> I interned for them as well. You know, and actually the, the article is well written. It seems legit. So we're going with it. This is from uh, 2018. But so Jeffrey Katzenberg, I think he's the, uh, he's the Quibi guy, Jer. Right? He is the Quibi guy. 
Yeah, oh my and, god, uh, really? Yeah, he worked he worked at Disney. That's why he was uh super well known. But so he worked at Disney and then eventually uh he went on to work or like create DreamWorks with Steven Spielberg and David Geffen. And uh so the idea for this movie started at Disney, like no one uh disputes that. And was uh, and the story was always going to be a bug's life. But then Katzenberg had an idea for an ant movie pitched to him called Army Ants back while he was at Disney before this before I think that was in 1992. And knowing that Disney was creating a bug's life, it like it basically became a race to see which movie could become or go to theaters first. And so anyways, um, DreamWorks had another it was supposed to be their first animated movie. It was called The Prince of Egypt. Remember that one, Bob? That was a good one. I, I saw it. Is that true? I'm pretty sure it's the movie I'm thinking of. <laughs> so that was supposed to be their first animated movie, but then Disney like said their release date, which I forget the actual release date. Jerry, you probably have that up. For A Bug's Life? Yeah. November 25th. Yeah, so they, they saw that they were going to release that movie, and so um, Katzenberg and everyone at Dreams Work pushed up Ants by five months. It was supposed to come out, I think, May the next year, April or March the the following year. And uh, so, like, he retaliated, so they uh, moved it up five months, and that's why Ants came to theaters first. And that's, I know Ants had a budget of $60 million and A Bug's Life was $45 million. I know A Bug's Life, obviously, I think made over, like, $200 million more, but that's, they rushed it, so it cost them more money to rush it. And it just, like, I don't know, we'll, we'll get into these movies, but I just thought that was super interesting, like, like both he, he worked at Disney, so like he knew like an ant movie would work, but it's just like you would think So he stole their <laughs> idea, sort of. Basically. Obviously, like the movies are different, but it, it, not it, really. They they're different because they, <laughs> they're I don't know, different time, enough. One's like existentially crazier to me than like a simple idea, as in the bug's life is just more of a, a smaller idea. But it's just wild to me that like you would think, hey, let's let's take a back seat on this one. Let's let's not try to also create an ant movie because how only one of them's going to do well and we have the worst idea so here's kind of wild reality though can you imagine if they push this movie out and it, it murders the bug's life it's like it's flip-flop say ant, the ant movie makes more money than like bug's life made more money than ants but imagine if it was flip-flopped and he pushed ants out early it makes more money than bug's life and it makes bug's life like completely obsolete that would be the biggest fu ever like i i like the gamble i like the gamble it might not have paid off the way he yes. wanted it to but it definitely worked. I mean, it's not. I mean, the movie made some money, and like, yeah. hey, it's twenty years later, and we're talking about it. So, and I think they like that's the reasoning I'm trying to beat a Bug's Life to theaters. But I wonder if like, do you do you wait for a Bug's Life to come out first, and like that one gets a lot of praise, and then people are like, oh, now I'll go check out Ants. This well, is the first DreamWorks movie, though. You said right? Yeah, the first animated DreamWorks movie. Yeah, because it so was it supposed really to be. Did, the... It really did work out for them because I mean, we're a few yeah, I mean, few years later, we get Shrek. Yeah, you're not like it's not a like bad call by them because they do make money. But it like when you're comparing the movies, it's just like maybe we should have uh, just let this one go. That's so interesting. I never would have thought in a million years like you just see that these two movies come out right near each other. I didn't know that there was this like little go behind by a guy that used to work at the like that's that's just interesting. It makes sense now. It makes sense why these movies came out so close to each other. I, I would like to see like. Like those guys, like like sit down at a bar together and talk about their ant movies and see which one. Like, oh, ours is ours is better than yours, you know. Like, I feel like it's like a pissing match between the two. Who would have guessed that ant movies would have been the gold rush of 1998? Everyone was just trying to get there first, and that Katzenberg, full of good ideas, as we've learned. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, this topic came up, Ben. Uh, thank you very much for that research. That was very enlightening. I. Uh, I found a list on Wikipedia of what they call twin films, which uh, they define as films with the same or very similar plot produced or released at the same time by two different film studios. And Interesting. Boy, are there a lot. Oh, let's hear some. I'm excited for this. I picked out like 10 or so that I remember, but this dates back. The first one on this list are two movies that came out in 1934 one was the rise of catherine the great and the other was the scarlet empress those might have been the only two movies that came out that year that's pretty wild yeah don't don't know much about the scarlet empress or rise of catherine but i'm gonna take your word for that but that, that blew my mind that that was happening 
I mean, basically, as long as movies have been coming out. So you're telling me the only idea in 1934 was about a Russian czar? That's that's wild. They couldn't come up with some stuff that year. You would think, right? Um, so I, I picked out a bunch that I recognized or I had remembered seeing advertisements for and getting confused myself. Um, another pair came out in 1998, Deep Impact and Armageddon. Is, uh, what's his name in both of those? Who's the guy that's in Armageddon? Is that Ben Affleck? Jason, Jason Statham? Is he in both those movies? I don't know if I've seen Armageddon. I've definitely seen Deep Impact. And I don't remember Jason Statham being in Deep Impact, but... He was, guy, he was in yeah. both. He was in both, Jay. Was lead? he? Yeah, he was the lead. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta think, if any of these movies had one of the same actors, that's even more wild to me. A couple more animated movies on this list... 2003 brought us Finding Nemo, followed shortly by 2004's Shark Tale, another Pixar DreamWorks. I remember, I remember that as a young boy, seeing Finding Nemo and then Shark Tale coming out after. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> ben, uh, you finally watched The Prestige. Are you going to watch The Illusionist that also came out in 2006, which is also about 19th century magicians? You know, I gotta think the prestige is better than the illusionist, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that one. I've never seen the illusionist myself, but yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you there. Uh, a couple more animated movies: Happy Feet and Surfs Up came out in '06 and '07, respectively. Is Surfs I... Up also a penguin movie? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought those were in the same universe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought that was a sequel. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. Those aren't the same thing. I'm, I'm pretty nope. sure the sequel to Happy Feet was Happy Feet 2, if I'm not mistaken. Happy Feet 2 surfs up. <laughs> 2009 brought us Observe and Report and Paul Blart Mall Cop. Sorry, that's a movies. great one. That's, <laughs> that's the one, best Jay. one on the list. <laughs> uh, 2011, this is a pairing that I was very confused by, just seeing like the posters for it. No Strings Attached and Friends with Benefits. Oh, yeah. That, I, I remember those coming out at the same time being like, isn't that the same the same exact <laughs> movie? Like, that one is the same exact movie. I don't even have yeah. to see either of those ones. Yeah, it's basically just, let's change the meaning of this saying and just make it a fucking time. Isn't Justin Timberlake in one of those? It's, yeah, uh, no, Ashton Kutcher. Yep, it's Ashton Kutcher and Natalie Portman versus Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis. That's weird because Mila Kunis <laughs> is married to... Ashton Kutcher now. Yeah, and Justin Timberlake is married to Natalie Portman. That is wild. <laughs> do you think? Do you think Mila Kunis and, and uh, fucking uh, Ashton Kutcher like don't like the, those movies? They're like, I don't want to see you with somebody else. Do you think they just like both left for work and then they had dinner the next day and they're like, are we filming the same movie? <laughs> uh, you might remember Jobs and Steve Jobs, two Steve Jobs biopics that came out in 2013 and 2015. Ashton Kutcher, yet again, starring in a movie that had a, a twin. That's the worst one, though, right? He might be a typecast actor. Twin twin movie actor. I think I've seen both of those movies. I don't really remember either of them that well. Pretty I'm, sure they both suck. Uh, 2013 gave us Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down. I forget which one of these two I've seen. I think it's White House Down. It is a fucking terrible movie, but it's... It's one of the best movies to watch and just laugh at how bad it is. Olympus Has Fallen, I've seen, and actually I'm pretty... White House Down has... Uh, Which one's Jamie Foxx? Is that White House Jamie Down? Jamie Foxx is, is White House Down. Okay, that's the one I've seen. I've seen both of them. Olympus Has Fallen, I saw in theaters. It's pretty fucking that, sweet. That's the Harvey Dent one, right? Yes. Yeah, I think I've only seen Olympus Has Fallen. Uh, 2013 also gave us This Is The End and The World's End. I was very confused when the marketing for both of these movies came out. Is that true? I've never heard of The World's End. That's like uh, basically the Simon Pegg comedy group versus like the Seth Rogen comedy group. Well, now I uh, want to see that one. I feel like I know this one now. I have not seen The World's End, but I've been making my way through Edgar Wright movies. I don't know if Edgar Wright directed this movie. But if Simon Pegg's in it, there's a pretty good chance he did. So maybe I'll get around to that one. And then the last I have on my list from 2019, Fire Fraud and Fire, the two Firefest documentaries that pretty dramatically came out at like within a week of each other, two weeks of each other. I fucking loved both of them. That was the whole thing is when you watched them, 
it was like like you would talk about Fire Fest and be like, which one did you watch, the the Hulu or the Netflix? And and like you, that would actually change it because they both had completely different like interpretations and like like different tellings of what happened. So like you had to know if you, the the true people that saw both. They're in an elite group, yeah. also known Ooh. as me. I, yeah, I saw both too. You kind of had to watch both because the Netflix one was like the the better produced one. The Hulu one just had the the main guy. What's his name? I forget his name. Billy but. McFarlane. Billy McFarlane. They like <laughs> had him interview, but like other than that, it wasn't like this. He was just lying the whole time, <laughs> like saying it was in like, in not his thirty fault. years. In thirty years, I'm gonna win like a trivia contest for knowing Billy McFarlane's <laughs> name. I like think about it in my sleep sometimes. I don't know why I remember this guy's face and name. Like it, it'll never leave my mind. Wasn't the Netflix one co-produced by the people who put on Firefest though? <sighs> yeah, it was like super convoluted. I don't remember. Wasn't that, that part I, of the shade? Like Hulu dropped theirs early and said, "Watch ours," because the Netflix one is biased, and everyone's like, "Oh shit." The drama between these documentaries is almost as good what, as the documentaries. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a list of twin movies. Maybe future double feature contenders. Pretty interesting. I, now we have a little more information as to how it happens, at least in one instance. But I don't know. Something that I've definitely noticed over time, but never really took the time to learn about. So don't say you never learned anything on the Big Movie Boys podcast. Before we uh, get into our two first of two movies, I do have a couple very quick questions for you guys. Uh, mainly, have you seen either of these movies before? If you have seen them, how recently was the last time you saw them? And then what order did you watch them in in the last week in preparation? Ben, we'll start with you. Uh, so I've never seen Ants, I don't think. I asked my parents this too, and they they confirmed they haven't seen it, so... Unless a stranger picked me up and brought me to the theaters back when I was two years old, I haven't seen this movie. And then A Bug's Life, I think I saw this once or I think I've seen it twice. And I think my most recent time was maybe like 10 years ago. So I don't really remember it at all. But uh, and as for your second question, I watched Ants first in honor of it coming out first. And then I watched A Bug's Life. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite the difference for me. Yeah. What about you, Bob? Um, so I thought I had seen Ants. I definitely had seen bits and pieces of it, or maybe I saw it as a kid somewhere because I slightly remembered it. But as I was watching the movie, I realized that, no, I have not seen Ants. At least I couldn't remember seeing Ants because it was all completely new to me. Uh, Bugs Life I've seen a good amount of times. I don't know. I've, I, I feel like I watched Bugs Life when I was a kid a lot, and I saw it very recently. I think I saw Bugs Life maybe like a couple months ago. It was on Freeform or something, and I watched it. So I've seen Bugs Life a lot. I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, and I ended up watching Ants first. I watched Ants one day, and then I watched Bugs Life the next day. I am in a very similar camp as you, Bob. I, I'm pretty certain I've seen Ants at least once. My dad was able to knock like just list off all of the actors in it so apparently he's a super fan or he has at least seen it a few times nice um, that was mostly new to me rewatching it definitely seen a bug's life a bunch of times however i don't think i've seen it in like 10 years it, for whatever reason i feel like it hasn't made my rotation of movies i've gone back to as much as toy story 1 and 2 or even Monsters, Inc. or The Incredibles. I feel like I've seen all those movies more recently. And then I did the same. I watched Ants first a couple days ago, watched A Bug's Life yesterday, and then had to rewatch parts of Ants today because I had forgotten most of it. So uh, the way we're going to do this, we're going to talk about Ants. We're going to go full spoilers on both movies. I imagine everyone's either seen them or doesn't care. Then we're going to talk about A Bug's Life, and then we will compare and contrast the two See what's similar, what's different. But we'll start with Ants, released on October 2nd, 1998, directed by Eric Darnell and Tim Johnson. This movie is written by Todd Elcott and Paul Weitz, and Chris Weitz, sorry. The Weitz brothers worked on this one. This movie stars Woody Allen, Sharon Stone, Sylvester Stallone, Gene Hackman, Christopher Walken, Jennifer Lopez, and many others. We all were either brand new to this movie or could not remember it very much. Ben, what were your expectations going into it, and did they meet your expectations? Did it exceed your expectations? 
or was it worse than you even imagined? See, I had high expectations for A Bug's Life, so for this movie, I kind of had lesser expectations, and but then that all kind of changed as soon as the whole cast was like just thrown up there, because that's the first thing that hits you, is just the whole cast gets thrown up, and you see all the names, and you're like, whoa, I did not realize all these people were in this movie, and then, so that got my expectations a little higher, and then I watched the movie, and it it did not come close to meeting my expectations. It was just uh, not what I was expecting. Like, my first thought was just, like, this doesn't even look pleasing for, like, children to look at. Like, they went for, like, every ant looks the exact same. I think the graphics are, like, poorly done. I th- which is, like, while I was watching this, I was even like, well, I shouldn't knock them because it's 1998. But then I'm like, then I watched The Bugs Life, and I'm like, well, theirs are way better. So it was just, like, ants, it was just, like, it wasn't pleasing to look at. The story was just kind of way too much for a kids movie it kind of boiled down to it was basically the holocaust but for ants and i it was tough to it was tough to like be like this is a kids movie so overall it was not like uh not like a great fun watch it was kind of more of like a downer movie even for a kids movie what about you bob see i kind of have a different view than ben i actually really enjoyed the movie if i like like i honestly i like watching ants i enjoyed watching ants more than i did watching bug's life now i think bug's life is a far more superior movie but like i said before when you asked us i've seen bug's life a lot when i watched bug's life i was like i've seen this movie so many times i barely even paid attention when i was watching it ants i had never seen or at least didn't remember it so i paid attention to ants and i pretty much enjoyed it i really did uh ben mentioned the cast they sort of hit you with the cast right away to let you know like hey there's some heavy hitters in this movie and i like sharon stone i like sylvester stallone Jennifer Lopez, I feel like this is one of her first things she did, right? Like, I, I mean, 1998, I feel like she was still really involved in, mu- in uh, music, not so much acting. And I get this is voice acting, but uh, still, it was just, um, I liked the voice actors. I really did. Um, the story was, I don't know, when I look back at it in hindsight, it's kind of not the greatest story. And the, the animation is a little whack. It is a little visually disturbing it's odd to think about though uh they like cursed in this movie they didn't curse but they said bitch they said like hell they said damn like they they had a few like did they sexual... say those words i did not pay yeah. attention to them saying bitch yeah. they said bitch wow and, and they, said, there... why are you bitching yeah and there was like hell and damn not that those are as bad but like there was more than i was expecting and there's a few like sexual references i mean not so much sexual but there was like definitely things that like it was like sort of those things that are meant for adults in a kid's movie, but I was just like, no, that seemed like just a little too over the head. I don't know. I feel like this movie almost would have been better if it was like PG-13 or something, you know? Like, I, don't, I don't know why. Like, I just think I would, it would have been like maybe a little funnier, but uh, I, I liked it. I, I really did. I don't think it was that bad, um, but in terms of watching it, I enjoyed this more than Bugs Life. Bugs Life's a better movie. I enjoyed Ants for what it was, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed my watch of it. So I, a little opposite of Ben, but Jeremy, what did, you, what did you think about Ants? So I went in with fairly low expectations, and as I was watching it, I was actually pretty into it. I would, I would say, I would qualify it as saying, while I watched this movie, it exceeded my expectations. Granted, those expectations were pretty low. Um, obviously, like you guys mentioned, the intro title credits hit you with that cast a lot of big names i will say though i didn't care for woody allen i thought everyone else i was pretty okay with i don't know if it was woody allen's fault or just the script itself but i wasn't huge into him or z as a character and uh definitely unlikable he's very unlikable and pretty irredeemable throughout the movie but uh, the biggest thing I noticed watching as an adult, something that I definitely missed as a kid, was like all of the Marxist undertones, because there's direct references to the working class reclaiming like the means of production and overthrowing the tyrannical government, like pretty heavy stuff for a kids movie. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was like the general who Gene Hackman I thought was actually good. I liked him. I thought he played like a really good. Uh bad guy but he's basically fascist and he's basically hitler to me and like the rest of them like 
Woody Allen and the, all the worker ants are, yeah, are communists. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And he wanted to get rid of, he wanted to like cleanse the ant. Yes. Like their, their, uh, the working their class. community. Yeah, it was weird. Like how he just wanted, he wanted to get rid of all the little guys and just have most of those alpha male, like big soldier ants. But it was just, it was a little odd and a little intense for kids a movie. That's why I said it might be better if you make it PG-13, add a little more cursing. There's already more than there should have been for a PG movie. Make it PG-13 and just really, really take it on home and play into those tones even more. And I think it might have been better, honestly. I did uh, I did also have a note that Ants felt like the like edgy older cousin of A Bug's Life because they do swear in it. There's a point where Z talks about making the princess part of his most erotic fantasies. Yeah. There's clear like depictions of like, you know, bug version of drugs and alcohol being used like <laughs> I, that was one of my favorite parts it it was definitely like okay dreamworks i see what you're trying to do here that they, they definitely earned their pg rating as opposed to the g rating that pixar goes for but uh yeah i don't know ben uh you want to hit us with some of your other uh your criticisms of it yeah i don't know the the biggest part for me was like the the children movie that starts out with a war and this is a stupid one, but like, so the termites are the bad guys in this one, as opposed to the, the grasshoppers in a bug's life. There's no need for the war. That's just kind of his way of like, he, he thinks the soldiers are the superior race yet. He sends them into battle knowing they're going to die. And I'm just like, I'm no, confused. that's because, so the reason he sent them in, there was a line that those soldiers that they were sending into battle were soldiers loyal to the queen. Oh, gotcha. There was like a throwaway line about that. That's the only reason. He he knew they were going to die, but he sent that platoon of soldiers because those are like the the main soldiers that are loyal to the the queen. So if they all die, the only soldiers that are left are the ones that are like loyal to him. So he... You know what? This movie was great. Great movie. (laughs) Other than that, that, me saying it out loud, that doesn't make a ton of sense, but there is a line that explains it in the movie, which now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of odd, but uh, yeah, because why was there a split in loyalty? But anyway, yeah, that's why he sent him in, knowing they were going to die. Because he needed needed them to die. Thank you. That redeems the movie a tiny bit for me. But (laughs) and then, but like overall, I just I was trying to watch this as if I was like not like if I was a kid because I'm judging it a little more. But I'm just like this movie seems way too harsh for children. And like we talked about, like the the commun and like the fascist. I I really compare General what man? I don't even know his name. General Mandible. 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 (laughs) Great name actually, but like he's basically Hitler, and it's just so like a really dark movie and like yeah z is just not a great hero he literally he does kidnap the princess like i know it's kind of like it's stupid that he's even like he he should be kind of a hero there they think he's a hero but he's really not he didn't do that anything is by far the worst scene in the movie it's terrible and like it's just odd. the fact that he's in the war to begin with i get why it happens he wants to impress the princess and then he realizes oh should i have to go to war but he holds barbados's head <laughs> In his that, arms, and I'm just like, what? This is a kid's movie? I'm like, I'm going to be scarred from this shit. That was a scary-looking ant, too. Yeah, uh, like, <laughs> Danny, Danny, Glover, Danny Glover, right? Yeah. Danny Glover is Barbados with his severed head. To- I was like, what? That it, it, was, it was creepy. Like It was really like nightmare fuel creepy. And same with the, the termites. Like That entire scene was just intense, you know, for a kid's movie. I love the decapitated Danny Glover, <laughs> and Z walks over to him. And he's like, "Am I am I gonna be okay?" And Z's like, "You're gonna be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't even Dude, worry about it. You're Dude, good." Z is a piece of shit in this movie. He is just. I don't think he's that funny. I don't think Woody Allen is that funny as Z. I don't know at any point if I'm like. I feel like it's supposed to be like he's the underdog and like he wants to be something and like I don't get that. I just get that this guy's a whiny bitch. He complains and like. Honest to God, I think if you swapped Flick from The Bug's Life and put his just his voice actor and put him in the role of that Woody Allen plays in uh, Ants, I think it would have been a better movie. I just think it's something about his voice. I don't think like the way they portray the character makes him as much seem like a dick. I think it's the way Woody Allen is delivering the lines as Z that makes him seem like a dick and then makes me not like him. It's, it's like his voice tone or his inflections. Something about it. I don't think the way the character is written 
makes him dickish. I just think if you had a more genuine, nice sounding voice to portray Z, it's going to come off the way that it's written. And I think that it would. Well, maybe not. Now that I think about it, because I just remember the erotic fantasies line that Jeremy brought up. So <laughs> maybe scratch but, that. I just no, think, I just think if you swapped the ants, if you swapped the lead ants, it'd be a better ants would be better. If you had the Bugs Life ant in ants, it would be a better movie just because he's so unlikable. Isn't Woody Allen is the unlikable? Yeah, and I, I agree with you. And like, it's maybe that's like when I watch these movies, sometimes in my head, I'm like, oh, I could I could be a voice actor. And then you see like a voice actor not do a good job. You're like, OK, maybe we should have had an actual like a list star because there's like so many stars in this movie. Like maybe we could have just like figured out a way to not have Woody Allen be the main character. Yeah, but, like, why? It's just so maybe weird. maybe they just the White Brothers loved Woody Allen and they they just wanted to give him the role. Like uh, other than that, I don't really know. Like obviously. Woody Allen's not like I don't think he's auditioning for this role, so I think they just gave it to him, and I think that's a mistake. And just like to go back to Jeremy's question on like what else, I did, like another part that I did not care for when they try to show the princess trying to like just be like a more down to earth girl, and they go to that bar and they show the ants dancing. I'm just like, oh this is God, like one dude. of the stupidest scenes I've ever that, fucking seen. That scene with the all the ants in a line dancing with that song in the background. It made my skin crawl. It was so weird, wasn't it? I was like, what, yeah. what are they trying to accomplish here? Are they showing like that Z is a likable person or what? Like he, he doesn't want to be like the other ants. I was very confused. And like I thought they were trying to establish a connection between the princess and Z, but it doesn't it doesn't even work because she doesn't remember him. They have no chemistry. I just, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't believe I, I know that's stupid in the end, like how they're together. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But they don't set it up where like they never show them progress in their relationship. He basically just kidnaps her. And I, I don't know. It just, I think that scene was just bullshit. Like, I think that's supposed to like set up the rest of the movie where they, what go to, what's it called? In, insect. Insectopia. Paradise? Yeah. Insectopia. Thank you. And it's just like, I don't, I don't understand that scene at all. It, it did not need to be in the movie. I could barely focus on that scene. Literally, that song that plays in the background is going to haunt my nightmares for the rest of my life. I don't know why they chose that song to be the song that they dance to, but it is terrifying. Yeah, it was that. It was, I think it goes with like the way, it, even like the way it was animated. I just feel like it. Just, I don't know. It just it felt very 1998 to me, and Bugs Like didn't. But um, I don't know. The whole movie is definitely creepier. It's more like. It's got a creepier vibe to it, they, you know. Like it, for whatever it reason, totally they decided does. what we should the style we should go for for an animated movie for children is realism. That's what they'll like, and we should also give our ants human teeth. That oh, I hate the human. That teeth. That won't be terrifying at all when they open their mouth right in front of the camera. The ants look very rough in this movie. My favorite ant, though. How about how about this? Who's your favorite character slash favorite ant? Mine is Sylvester Stallone. Mine is loved him. Christopher Walken. Easy. He was good, too. See, I think it's easy the other way. I think Sylvester St- Stallone's character is just so stupid that it's funny to me. He's the only character that I actually liked. I like every character but Woody Allen, if I'm being honest. I like Jennifer Lopez's character a lot. I love Sylvester Stallone's character. He is playing like a, a doofus meathead, but like his voice is perfect yeah. for that, and I think he does it well. Um... I love Christopher Walken's character is so cool. He's freaking awesome. Like I don't know why. Like I like that he like switches to the side of good at the end. Like that's that that was really good. Gene Hackman as General Mandible. His voice is literally made for that role. Like I think that's perfect. I, he's he's had to have voiced other like generals in animated movies before because I feel like his voice just like sounded familiar for some reason. Or maybe I just heard it before. And I even like Sharon Stone as the the princess. Like, I thought she played that, like, like at voice acted that role well. It just comes down to Woody Allen. I really think the rest of this cast did such a good job, and I liked all their characters. And Woody Allen is, like, the only thing bringing this movie down for me. But Jeremy said it, too. Like, the, the animation, and I even brought it up at my first, uh, when I first started talking, the animation is just stupid to me because they went for... These are ants that they, they are brown. They're like not pleasing to look at, and even in animated form. Whereas Bugs Life makes them blue, and it's way less realistic. But it's just more, it's more visually pleasing. And even, even like the cave or like under the ground where they live, it's just so. I get it's probably more realistic, but as a 
I'm watching a kids movie. I'm watching a movie. I don't want it to. I don't need it to look like spot on. I'm not watching Nat Geo. Like I just want it to be more pleasing to look at. Like even even all the ants, they look like E. T. to me. It's like it's freaky to look at. I also feel like that we're thinking about realism. I also feel like that tunnel, that thing would have blown a long time ago. Like you're telling me it's like right below this like pond slash puddle thing or whatever that is. How the fuck is that place just not flooded all the time? Like, I don't know. It just seemed a little weird. Like the, I guess that's one of the things I, I was going to wait until the, the comparisons, but I kind of liked that part at the very end where they, they zoom out and it is New York City, whereas uh, in the Bugs cool. Life, they zoom in to begin with like, and show you that it's like this big like jungle. I, I thought that was cool, like just at the showing there, just a like, very tiny speck in Central Park in New York City. That was like one of the... When it happened, I was like, ah, that was cool. And that was I cool. was like, didn't like the movie, but I liked that part. Can either of you explain to me why, since they clearly decided to have like a visual distinction between the worker and the soldier ants, how Woody Allen and Sylvester Stallone are able to swap places and nobody calls them out on it? <laughs> That's yeah, a good was, question. <laughs> I, I was literally no defense. <laughs> It's, it's pretty so stupid. stupid. Like there's it's literally soldier ants and there's worker ants, and at least the other movie they're just all the same ants. I didn't. I personally, I don't know about you guys. I did not know there were just bigger ants that stayed with like other ants. I just assumed like you, you in Gene Hackman's fantasy, you just kind of stayed with your own kind. But uh, yeah. so that part was even weird to me that there were like even soldier ants. Yeah, but I mean the thing that. Also made no sense, Jeremy, that how they were able to swap places is Z didn't know where he, or uh, Woody Allen, Z, did not know where he was going. Like, he didn't know, like, the marching orders. He didn't know, like, their routines and their drills that they did. So shouldn't someone immediately have been like, uh, what are you doing here? And especially he draws attention to himself when they're marching out to go to war. He's screaming for Princess <laughs> Ada. And I'm like, okay, no, that wrong guy one. is... Bala. Oh shit! He's screaming. <laughs> I told you I'd do it. Um, he's screaming for for Princess Bala, and it's just like, okay, that guy's clearly not one of us. Like, what the fuck is he doing here? No, nah, dude. But Barbados had his back. He didn't have to worry. He had his back. I want to see Ants to uh, Return of Barbados. <laughs> he was a he prequel was fucking... story. It's just Barbados up and coming, climbing the ranks of the Ants Army. <laughs> he was the. He was awesome. Him and Christopher Walken were great. Like, two very likable characters. Yeah. But, oh, my God. I would love to see more Danny No, Lover I like the as idea an ant. of a prequel. Them two and Sylvester Stallone working their way up through the ant army. I would love oh to see that. Oh, my God. That would be fucking that awesome. That I would like. Here, here, I got another one for you guys. How about we move this pile of trash where these ants live to another little city? <laughs> the name of that city? <laughs> Boston. Ants 2, Battle for Boston. Barbados's journey. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. You're wrong on this one. It's the same movie, but instead of Z, it's W, and it's Mark <laughs> Motherfucking Ball. <Baldwin. laughs> oh my God! I hope the executives from DreamWorks listen to this podcast because that's a license to print money. <laughs> the uh, the last thing I'll say about this movie before I'm ready to move on is I thought the ending was pretty lackluster. Mandible just falls to his death i guess we never see him again and then it ends with woody allen narrating i'm pretty sure i've knocked an ant off like a large table before and they still walk around after so he fell about a total of two feet and is just we're we're just as, supposed well, to assume he's yeah, dead they can lift like 40 times their body weight or something don't they mention it in the movie like i'm i think a fall from that height they'd be okay well does he fall in water i can't even remember Oh, because uh, Colonel Cutter falls in water to save Z, but other than that, he, he just falls and hits a rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I was unsatisfied. I guess, Jerry, you were ready to move on, but my like my one thing that I kind of liked about the movie was when uh, Princess Bala and Z were kind of by themselves with those other with the other bugs at oh, the, the Insectopia. Flies. I liked the stoner flies. I, I thought it was pretty funny, like, because the one fly, what was the line saying? Like, yo, have you ever thought about if we're just like tiny little creatures on this big <laughs> plate? Like, I that like that line. line. That was that was hysterical. That was really funny. 
And he's like, whoa, that's deep, man. I was like, it's, shit, that's great. It, it's funnier because later you see them like zoom out and they're literally in New York City. Like, yeah. And the only other line that I laughed at was, I think Z says, he goes like, you're built like a pebble. Like, I just thought that was so stupid that it was funny. All right, you boys ready to move on to A Bug's Life? Let's do it. A Bug's Life released 54 days later, November 25th, 1998. Directed by John Lasseter and Andrew Stanton. Written by the two directors, as well as Joe Ranf, Don McEnery, and Bob Shaw. This movie stars Dave Foley, Julia Louise Dreyfus, Kevin Spacey, Hayden Penetier, and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, I guess I know we kind of mentioned a little bit, but what were your expectations going into A Bug's Life? And did it exceed or were you disappointed upon this rewatch? Ben, we'll go back to you. Yeah, so like I said, I had higher expectations for A Bug's Life, and it basically met my expectations. I I like this movie way more. It's just, the story is just way more children-related. Like, it's just a a small, it's not existential, like them trying to kill all these ants to to make one breed of ants live on. It's just, they have an enemy, the uh, the grasshoppers, and they want to get rid of them, basically. They don't want to have to deal with it anymore. And it's just, it's more pleasant to watch. The visuals are better. The storyline is just way more pleasing for a child. And I just think, like, the characters are even better. I think they do a better job with, like, bringing in the different um, insects, like using the caterpillar, the ladybug, the butterfly. I just think they, they use... Even like the stick, the the stick man or whatever, the stick insect. Like, I just think they do a way better job of using the... The bugs and but yeah, I, I hadn't seen this in so long. So Bob, I know you you watch this every year. You say I think. Yeah, for me, uh, my expectations it didn't really exceed or I don't know. I didn't really have any because I'd seen it so many times and I know it's a good movie. Like like I said before, I think that Bugs Life is a much better movie. But I enjoyed watching Ants more because it's the first time I had seen Ants. I've seen Bugs Life. I know it's a good movie. So met my expectations. Because I already had, I already knew it was a good movie. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a good, good movie. And I s- said that I watch it all the time. I probably do watch it maybe like once or twice every year, year and a half. Like, honestly, like, I feel like I just stumble upon this movie. There's no way. Um, There's I, it's absolutely on free, no way. It's on free form all the time, dude. I watch it. I don't watch it start to finish, but I mean, if it's on, I'll throw it, I'll throw it in there. I'll throw it in the rotation if it's on the TV. Um, yeah, it's it's just a good movie. I really enjoy it. I think the characters are very likable. Um, I think I laugh more. It's just uh, I I like the representation, like the way the bugs are portrayed in this movie. I just think it's a little, a little, a little uh, more entertaining. If I'm being honest, though, I having not seen this movie in a while had certainly had higher expectations than ants, but because. This wasn't a movie I'd gone back to. I thought maybe it was, like, not as great as some of the other early Pixar movies. Um, This exceeded my expectations completely. This movie absolutely slaps. I've caught myself laughing several times. Like, there's some genuinely funny moments in this movie. The music, Randy Newman killing it. They picked the greatest person they could have found to score these Pixar movies in the early years. It's so good. It's, it's so good. Yeah, but it's it's just uh, it just sounds like Toy Story. What's wrong with that? If it's already perfect, I want to hear Toy Story with Toy Story, not Bugs Life and Toy Story. But I'm not gonna, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I just thought of Toy Story right away. I did too, which is why I loved it. But yeah, I mean, like I said, this movie. I think I came into it with too low of expectations because I really liked it. This is going to be one that I come back to. I don't know if I can guarantee I come back to it as often as Bob does over there, but it's definitely... it's on TV. When it's on TV, (laughs) let let me reiterate what I was saying. When it's on TV, I watch it. I'm not actively sitting down twice a year and throwing on Bugs Life because I love it so much. It's just if it's on, I'm like, oh, Bugs Life, good movie. Like It's a free-form classic. (laughs) The first thing I noticed right away, right at the beginning, is how immediately likable Flick is and how that's just an absolute stark contrast to Ants. And every man, like like, like a lovable idiot, which is exactly what I almost feel like Z was supposed to be. But like Flick is just so much more likable. Like you said, Jeremy, he's just he's a lovable idiot. 
um, he's not actually an idiot, but you know, like he, he means well, you know, everything he tries to do is for the benefit of the colony. It's just, a, he just always fucks it up somehow, you know, like it's just, I don't know. He's such a, he's, he's a good character. I really like it. Yeah. They gave him a, a tiny bit more depth than Z. Z was just lazy. I think is what it boiled out to. Not that like, you know, I don't need him to actually be okay with like, uh, working all the time. Like, but Flick is just like at least they made him like this stupid little inventor guy and he wants to like help the colony and yeah he's like he fucks up but he, yeah he means well and he's like this likable character and he he just wants to help in any way he can whereas Z just wants to not work and it, Z, it's Z totally thinks different about himself Z thinks about himself yeah, and exactly. Flick thinks about the colony exactly and that's why like in the end I can understand why princess which one is she Princess Adam. Ada, Julia Louis Dreyfus, which I loved. I didn't even realize it until I looked up the cast. But let's just call her Elaine. <laughs> yeah, Elaine was great. Like, like I believe them being together in the end because, like, he's actually like a good person. And oh, so I, I liked I liked their little romance. If I'm being honest, like the whole thing where like she didn't like him at first. She thought she was he was stupid, and she slowly realized like, oh no, he's actually really smart. And like we just said, he is trying to do everything for the betterment of the colony, and she realizes that. Kind of believable, if I'm being honest. I really, I really liked that little dynamic, and I thought they did it pretty well. And at the end, when they end up together, it's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I definitely think they have a better relationship because you immediately get the idea, like within the first minute of the first scene, that there is already a pre-existing relationship there, even if it is that she doesn't like him very much. But then you see how that arc, you know, continues and yeah. changes over time. I think it works. I think it feels real to the story. I also just love the world that they built in this Pixar bug world where they translate, you know, all this real world technology into, you know, leaves and sticks and stuff. When a uh, flick rolls up a, a blade of grass and puts a bead of water in it and makes a telescope or he sticks a twig through a rolled up uh, leaf or whatever and it becomes a microphone. Here's the yeah, thing, they- though. All the size dynamics in this movie are completely off. Like, the way that, like, the things you're describing right there, like, think about the size of ants and about how small those twigs would have to be. And, I don't know, just think about how small, like, an ant is, dude, and all the little equipment they make, and the, 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 them next to the bird contraption they make later. Or, fuck, them next to the goddamn grasshoppers. Do you know how big a grasshopper actually is compared to an ant? Like, the size dynamics are completely off. And that's something that i noticed this time you know it being possibly my 200th time watching the movie i uh i know i thought about that this time i don't know i was i was like this is not accurate in terms of size of Bob, these if insects. you want a realistic ant movie boy do i have one for you <laughs> <laughs> no jeremy's totally right i like i don't know if this was one of the things you laughed at jer but the very early on when they're moving the seeds to the the big pile for the grasshoppers they a leaf falls and they, the oh, guy yeah. has no idea what to do with himself. I just I think they like they do build the world better, whereas like ants, they're just underground basically the whole movie. Besides that, Insectopia, in, in this movie they're up above the ground and they're just showing the whole world and like showing stupid ways that yeah, it, but that obviously would never happen. But ants tries to be like dead on accurate, whereas uh, a bug's life just tries to be a kid's movie and it, it just fun. works way better yeah it's a fun movie to watch that leaf falls and the ant that's right in front of it is, i'm lost we're gonna be <laughs> stuck here forever <laughs> like, and the guy has to be like no you can you can walk yeah. around it it's okay <laughs> that was that was genuinely funny i love and that, that was a great way to start the movie that had me laughing right away like and there's like there's dumb like slapstick humor in this as well that's pretty funny like pretty early on when the one ant like I don't know, a berry or something falls on him and he just starts running around and he runs like yeah. off screen. Like there's just like stupid funny stuff like that too. And yeah, just can I piggyback off that while yeah. we're talking about the stupid humor? Anytime the caterpillar talks or when the caterpillar gets <laughs> stuck and he's like, Oh, come get me, buddy, you're not gonna get me. <laughs> he's just stuck because he's so fat. I'm like, that's so hysterical. And even at the end when he finally becomes a butterfly and he's just a caterpillar with tiny wings. And they all, that is so they all start lifting him up and he's like, I'm already flying. You guys look like ants from all the way up here. And he's a quarter of an inch off the ground. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. We we wanted a Barbados uh prequel story. I'd like to see uh 
a sequel with the fucking caterpillar. <laughs> yeah, he was really, I want to see them in the circus. Like, I just want to follow that guy around in the circus. Speaking of the circus, one of the other great characters was the flea. PT the, flea. The little, <laughs> yeah, he was hysterical. Oh my god! Every time that guy opened his, his little bug mouth, I was I was laughing. I thought everything he said was funny. John Ratzenberger making his contractually obligated appearance in every Pixar movie. He's great in everything, right? I right. guess I'm just confused at the end when they rejoin the circus. They, uh, I'm confused. I thought they hated the flea. Now yeah, they're okay because they got their workers' them. rights. He doesn't pay <laughs> them. He said it. <laughs> I uh, I also think that the villain in this movie is incredible. Granted, the voice actor is a real-life villain, so maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe we, uh, we, Let's skip over that, Jared. Maybe we should not talk about him in real life. <laughs> in In hindsight... Hopper is a lot more scary, isn't he? <laughs> like, because Gene Hackman has like other roles where he's like, like he plays the, he's the head coach in Hoosiers. Like he has these roles. Meanwhile, Kevin Spacey's out here raping people. It's yeah. tough. It's like, Whoa, genuinely hey, scary. Hey, hey. Allegedly, we don't want him to cut, yeah, cut, do, cut that. I cut that now. Hey, I want to see. I want to see said that. morning. <laughs> okay, I want to see tomorrow morning, man. Cut that. <laughs> but no, like Kevin Spacey is Hopper. Hopper's genuinely scary. Like he has the, you know how like Colonel Cutter and Ants is also kind of scary. Whereas Kevin Spacey, yeah, Hopper just hates everyone he's around too, and he's like, if one ant steps up to you, that means they think they all can. We have to crush them all, and it's just like he's actually talking. I know the other one wants to murder a whole bunch of ants, but he's talking about like assassination. It's he plays a really dark, scary character, and I think he, I, as much as I'm like genuinely afraid of Kevin Spacey in real life, I think the I think it's a better villain. But but I think I would have liked uh, Gene Hackman could have done this too, like just as uh he could have effectively he could have. But you also have to think that Hopper, aka Kevin Spacey, uh, he also suffocated one of his men on screen. Just like three. it was nothing. Yeah. It just killed That's one of my favorite just... scenes is when he's, he pulls out the one seed the and he's like, did that hurt? Yeah. And they're all like, no, that didn't hurt. And he's like, how about this? I remember watching that <laughs> as a like, kid and like getting freaked out by it. That's a great like uh, visualization of what he is trying to convey, like the entire like thing that's driving his character about how like we can't let them stand up to us. Like the only reason we have power is because they don't know that they have strength in numbers. Like and the way he visualizes that, I just thought I was like, oh shit, like that is super smart. And like I don't know, that was that was what one of the things I think makes his villain character probably superior to uh, General Mandible Gene Hackman. But uh, oh my god, I'm yeah, putting... he's. Uh, I'm putting Hopper up there like all time movie villains. Like he really did it for me. No, and, and honestly, that's not even an exaggeration. Like it really isn't. Like if you think about it, after watching him in this movie, he's really scary. And then you have the, the power of hindsight as well that makes it even more scary. Like it, it, he is really like a good movie villain. And this is like probably like a swept under the rug good movie villain. Like this is like not one that you're going to see on many people's lists. But if you go into this movie thinking about it, and then after the movie, like, you really put your mind to it. Yeah, he's an incredible villain. Like, a well-thought-out, good mo- I don't know, it was, just, it was awesome. His motives make sense, and, but and we've talked about sequels and prequels here. We didn't technically see him get eaten by those baby birds. I, I'm ready for <laughs> Kevin Spacey's <laughs> coming back to society role. It, hey, he made a, he made a good a video at the end of 2020, a very likable, he, he redeemed himself. I think everyone respects him again. Let's we're talking get him about back. We're, ta- we're talking about him way too much right now. <laughs> I'm ready for him to make his return to the big screen in A Bug's Life 2. I also, uh, that scene that introduces Hopper, the sound design in this movie is incredible across the board. But when he says, let's fly, and then it sounds like a bunch of motorcycles revving when they start flapping their wings, I'm like, this is sick. This just this made smart. him and his gang because they call it, they call themselves a gang, and that's definitely you definitely get that feeling from them, and the the sound alone does that for you as well as just everything else the the dynamics of that group and everything. But uh, the the sound design for everything in this movie is really good. Can we talk about one of the the flaws of their motives though? Like it makes sense that they want to like. They're, they think they're superior to the ants, so they want them to work for them. 
they had a lot of seeds. If he wouldn't have used them to kill all of his uh, his workers, like it, it kind of like obviously they could still probably eat those. But I think they were good for the winter. I don't no, know no, why, no need to go back. I don't know why they needed to do that. Like the the guy made a point. Like so, basically, his motive becomes because one ant stood up to him, but then immediately like went back down because he was so afraid. Like it did not. It didn't need to escalate to uh, like him going back and threatening to kill the queen bee. Exactly, queen ant, queen ant. <laughs> I don't know. I, I liked it all. I think it it made sense for what he was doing. It, it was they did. They it did was it more well. about well. power than it was actually about you know resources Food. or anything. It's just exercising power. You guys want to talk about what do they call the bug city in this one? Do you remember? Oh, just I think it's just the city. The big, I think he just big says, city, I like think? the big city. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, like I said, similar to translating, you know, technology into twigs and sticks. Everything about the bug city that he goes to is awesome. From the kind of like simulated traffic, you got the fireflies directing the traffic with the, you know, Christmas lights or whatever. He goes to a bar because apparently you can't make a an ant movie without there being a bar in it. And uh, we see the circus and we get introduced to the circus troupe. And that whole introduction to all the members of the circus and the performance they put on, I love every second of it. It's like genuinely funny. They like the way they, they don't kind of skip over that scene to just kind of show you, oh, they're in the circus. They show like all their roles. And I think they do it like so effectively and it's so like, it's genuinely funny. And then like later on when they're like, when like the miscommunication happens and he thinks they're warriors and that whole scene happens. I think that's like funny too. Like I, I gotta think, I don't remember if I saw this in theaters, I, I would have been like two. So I, I wouldn't have actually remembered it, but I gotta think kids loved this stuff. It was just way, it was way more appeasing. It was more well thought out, like like the way that they introduced all the you know the circus characters. It was it was just I don't know, it was well thought out. Like you said, like you saw that scene to introduce them, and it all kind of like showed their role. And like, yeah, I don't know. Like I'm trying to think. Like if I was a kid and saw these movies in theaters, I would definitely have liked Bugs Life more. You know, like I'd a thousand like percent cooler characters. Like. Uh, I don't know. Just probably funnier to kids too. If I'm being honest, I think I think they'd laugh more at Bugs Life. Because I mean, we'll get getting, that later, but because I'm laughing at like uh, the the flies being high in the other movie. I, I'm guessing <laughs> kids aren't laughing at that when they're no. young. I'm guessing parents weren't leaning over and saying, "Hey, they're fucked up right now." That's yeah. why that's funny. You don't think the kids <laughs> laughed in ants when the one ant calls the other ant a pawn of the oppressor? I'm sure they were rolling at that. No, but the the circus is great. The interaction with the fly audience is great. Everything with P.T. Flea is super funny. And that my, one of my favorite things in this movie, which is the dumbest, smallest thing, is that the two little pill bugs are called Tuck and Roll. <laughs> that had me rolling. I didn't realize that. <laughs> that's, that's just good, well thought out. Like, that's, just, what, that's great. What were those bugs? Can you explain that to me? I don't know what bugs those they were. They were potato bugs. Oh, okay, thank you. And I think, like, you can clearly see that they spent a lot of time and effort into selecting what kind of bugs were going to be part of this and then using that bug's, like, unique abilities or features exactly to create this performance and everyone has their role and you can see exactly the stick bug is pissed because he always gets cast as the broom or the sword or whatever. And it's, I don't know. Which is funny as shit if you but, think about it. Like. And- but even throughout the whole movie, like they each have their distinct role. Like the ladybug is like he hates that he's considered a lady, but then he becomes like the mom to all these yeah. ants in the end. And <laughs> that's I, so just, smart. Like <laughs> it's so funny, yeah. I, and then speaking of like that, I don't know, Girl Scout troop that he ends up, you know, kind of <laughs> Being becoming the, the den I think he's the mama. Yeah. The den mom, yeah. The uh, den mama. When they when they come back to the colony and they have like that preschool play they put on and it shows all of them dying and everything. And they all, cause there's that big, you know, miscommunication flick thinks he's bringing back warriors really is bringing back circus performers. And when they put on that school play, I don't know, the, the kid actors <laughs> do it so perfectly. Like it, it feels like you're watching a, a middle or elementary school play happen, but it's bugs. 
Yeah, like I love the part where they show the mural and they show the caterpillar cut in half and bleeding, and they're like, "What?" They were so confused, and it's just so funny. They're like, "We, we thought it would be better to show you dying to be more I, what it is would it? Be more dramatic, dramatic. Yeah, it's yeah. so great, hysterical. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I could go on with more and more stuff. Are there any uh, any big things that stuck out criticism wise of this movie? Clearly, it's we all agree it's very good, but no movie's perfect. Criticisms of this movie, that's hard to say. Uh, the only thing that I can think of, and I think it's only because I watched, um, I thought the, uh, like the colony, I mean, they were underground in, um, in Ants. Like most of the time they were underground. I would like to see like their actual uh, like city that they lived in, like their, their uh, colony. I would like to see that a little more developed. There's a little more different because you had like the stream and the big tree above it. So it was very different, but I would have liked a more developed colony. I don't know. I, I felt more small scale. But when you think about ants, there's a lot of ants. I, you know, and, and like obviously in the movie, they, they talk about how like there's strength in numbers. But I think there was maybe like 25 to 30 grasshoppers and maybe like 250 ants, you know? But then I look at ants like in the ants movie and i picture like yeah there's like fifty thousand fucking ants here you know i would like a, li- a little like bigger scale for bugs life if that makes sense i don't know if that makes sense but i would maybe a little bigger scale to make it seem a little more realistic i don't know I, i'm really reaching for a criticism of it i think it's a fantastic movie <laughs> bob just watch ants again because the- i know <laughs> all, of, all of your criticisms of a bug's life are strongly shown in ants i think you actually <laughs> like ants more <laughs> i i said it in the beginning i said that i enjoyed this watch of ants more because i've seen bug's life before but bug's life is the better movie ben do you have any any criticisms my criticism is just like yeah kevin uh hopper i'm gonna stop saying kevin spacey <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopper like doesn't need to go back and i think it's i think it's bullish, but obviously what happens for the movie then but i i really like this movie it's way better than uh, ants i guess bob your point of um like they don't show like the city where they live more like the underground part i think they do an all right job just showing them hiding at the beginning like i think that's what it is more so like it, it is just more so basic there's nothing really down there they're more so up trying to get food most of the time but my did you guys watch until the end of the movie and see the uh the, the bloopers, bloopers? The, those are the introduction the of pixar bloopers yeah dude i love that dude i've I didn't know that's where it started, and it was just so funny. Like the idea that these these bugs are actors, I think is just it. It was so fucking. Fun. That was the funniest that was part of the movie to me. Yeah, it really was. I it count was it as part of the movie because, like, there's, like, I feel like we all do this now. Like when you're done watching a movie, you kind of, especially on Netflix or Disney Plus, whatever you're watching on, you like fast forward to the end to see if like you're missing anything rather than just getting out of it. Because like half the movies nowadays do something at the end, and I think you can either like it can either be a waste of time or it can be beneficial and i think that was so it was so cool totally totally agree and bob i'm i'm going to kind of agree with you with what you said i the only criticism i was going to bring up is that there were several times where it felt like there were maybe 50 ants in this colony and i don't know if, you know they ran out of budget to pay all the extras that they needed to fill in that space and i love what they do in the bloopers where they have the one lady talking to a cutout, and you realize oh, all the background ants are just cutouts. I was like, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's just, once again, just smart. Like, and I wish, like, like, they make the blooper reel smart. I'm like, that's hysterical and just so well thought out. It really is. That's why I'm confused, Bob, why you, I know you, your explanation for why you liked Ants more this time is because you didn't watch it, but like, you also didn't watch Cats before. Did you like Cats better than A Bug's Life? I'm just confused why you thought Ants was better than A Bug's Life. No, 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 no. I don't think it's better. I'm, if, I'm saying I enjoyed my watch of Ants. Like this time, I said I watched, I watched Ants first and then I watched Bug's Life after. I enjoyed my watch of Ants more than my watch of Bug's Life because I've seen Bug's Life before, so there was nothing new to me. You know, I, I picked up a, a couple of the, the nuances, and now that we're talking about it more, I'm like getting more into it. But I... When I was watching Bugs Life, I would get up, I would leave the room, you know, I'd do this. I didn't have to pause it because I'd seen the movie before. Ants, I was like, let me pause the movie. Got to know what goes on. So I was more invested in Ants. But Bugs Life is so much better than Ants. Like, it's, it's so, not even close. So, but my watch. You, I know you watch better. a Bugs Life once a month, but say like five years from now, 
say you haven't watched either. Which one would you be more like if we did this again in five years? Which one would you be more excited to watch? I don't know. They don't play ants on Freeform, so <laughs> I probably, I'll be honest with you. I probably won't see ants ever again. I'll probably wait like ten to fifteen years, and then I'll then I'll be on another movie podcast, and we'll be reviewing ants, and I'll be like, "Have I seen it before? I don't remember." <laughs> I hope that happens. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to mention about a bug's life before we wrap uh, this up here. Uh, this is a tweet that was going around, got pretty popular, and it was. Uh, Directed our way by one Liz Wall. Who? Uh, the tweet says, Y'all think Jeff Bezos watches A Bug's Life and roots for the grasshoppers? Care to weigh in? Probably. Most likely, yeah. Those are his dudes. Yeah, I'm sure he, he watches it and he's like, yeah, work, work for him. What are you talking about? He's bigger. He has more power. Why are I you think not he, putting in more work for him? I think he might have based his entire career off of Bug's Life. It's very possible. I know uh, Ants is clearly much more uh, direct with its messaging of oppression and, you know, the proletariat revolution, but uh, I, I think those themes are very apparent in both. The Ants just are oppressed by bigger people. It seems that's just the way of life until they manage to fight back. Strength in numbers, baby. We, uh, I know we kind of compared and contrasted a little bit along the way i got a couple of notes left over are there anything you guys want to mention uh comparing the two movies here um i would say and we touched on it a little bit but the animation differences are huge and and you can tell now now that we know that ants was rushed out i think they rushed a lot of the animation because like i said i said earlier when we were talking about ants ants looked like it came out in 1998 bugs life looks like it could have came out in like, like 2012 like, like the animation in bugs life is so much better i mean it really holds up some of the scenes like the night scenes that were happening and like the fire was on like, like hopper's face that really stuck out to me as like i was like holy shit like that looks really good like the way he's lit in the darkness from the fire like that was like scary and like super well animated like that that, that, was, that was like blowing my mind to think about that that came out in 1998 yeah i 100% agree on that and I don't think that it was the fact that it was rushed. I think they made those decisions much earlier on. Like, they they didn't decide what the characters were going to look like five months before they were originally going to release it. Someone decided, we're going to go realistic with it. We're going to give them human teeth, and they're going to cause children to have nightmares. Pixar, being the superior company, was like, uh, what if we made them, like, a more friendly color and we gave them really big, expressive eyes and... Uh, yeah they're blue (laughs) we don't need them we know ants in real life have six legs but the way they're going to be walking around we can probably get away with just giving them two legs two arms you know it'd probably look weird if they had four legs and two arms and dreamworks is like no we're going to give them four legs and it's going to look really creepy but we're going to do it so yeah it's no competition a bug's life looks 100 percent better in every way yeah just to like piggyback off what you guys were saying like my last couple notes like kind of go into that like i just thought uh a bug's life was way smarter obviously way well more thought out i think i think yeah jeremy you made the point of i don't know if the the you know how it was pushed up five months like i don't know what those five months do like story-wise i don't think it changes that at all maybe the graphics are a little better maybe they're not as rough i don't think the the ants maybe necessarily look like et with teeth but like i i and maybe they draw out uh, Insectopia a little more and like try to make that more visually pleasing because I think a bug's life is just way better how they use the other, the other insects uh, other than the ants and make it just a way more colorful movie. And then my other thing is how it was pushed to be like ants coming out first. Do you think like if ants waits and just kind of waits for a bug's life, sees how, uh, sees how it does. Do you think more people are like, into going to ants then like do you think it changes do you think it matters like did a bug's life get affected that ants came out first do you think their box office is different if it comes out first do you think it's higher like like, i'm just curious is like that's what fascinates me like about the twin movies i think people might have seen like the previews for ants and been like oh cool a movie about ants and then like they saw the preview for bug's life and they're like well it looks a little bit better maybe i should take my kids to that that doesn't look as scary so like I don't know. I, I, maybe, maybe if they came out at the same time. Think about it. Like they came out a few days. Like, like, well, how many days apart did they come out? Fifty-four, right? 
Okay, so there, so these are in theaters at the same time. You have the there was a majority of people that yeah, ants came out first, so people saw ants. But there was a time when they were out at the same time, so you had a choice of which one you wanted to see. So I'm assuming you go off of like previews, but mostly word of mouth. So there's probably a few people that might have seen both, and then like they told their friends like, oh no, dude, skip ants, go see go see Bugs Life. So I think in a way it probably might have helped Bugs Life. I don't know. I don't. I don't think any amount of time would have made Ants a better movie. I I think they were misguided with what they were trying to do. I mean, any any kids movie that expressly talks about reclaiming the the motherland. Yeah, like the the genocide <laughs> themes, the uh, reclaiming the means of production, the fascism going Not on, great. like. Those are just weird elements to include in a kid's movie. And like I said, A Bug's Life has some of those elements of, like, they ex- explicitly mention that the ants are being oppressed, but then they don't turn it into, like, this really, like, socio-political commentary. They just, they go recruit, you know, warrior bugs that end up being circus performers, and that's a much more entertaining story. Do you think the, uh, do you think the guy whatever his name is, I can't remember right now, the guy that uh, wanted to Katzenberg? push this. Yeah. Do you think he like saw Bugs Life and was like, shit, we fucked up. I mean, he ends up making like almost $60 million. So I think he's probably like, okay with it. He's like, oh, we basically stole an idea and we made $50 million. But I, I got to think there's some pride that comes along with that. Like he left Disney. He wants to make a better movie and he has to be like, wow, we really, we really made a, a shitty movie. I, I just, it's not even in the same ballpark. Like, I, I don't think they're even close to being, like, they're the same general theme and same ideas, but it's just one executes it, like, perfectly, and one fucks up. I think if Quibi taught us anything, it's that Katzenberg cannot admit when he has a bad idea. So true. Um, uh, I guess we've basically talked about everything else on my list. The last thing I'll bring up is just, uh, I was surprised I guess I expected these movies to be a little more similar thematically but I did pull different themes from them and you guys can agree or disagree with me but it felt like an ants it was more of uh, it's okay to be different or similarly like you don't necessarily need to fall into the role that other people give you you know you have autonomy you can do whatever you want whereas a bug's life is more about failing as like a stepping stone towards success. Like just because you fail doesn't mean you failed. You could just be one step closer to succeeding. Would you agree or disagree with either of those? Yeah, I think, no, I think you hit the nail on the head with that, that description. Bugs Life obviously like plays in that strength in numbers a little bit. And like, I don't know. I, I feel like also with ants, like obviously Z yeah, he he just he, he doesn't Z so much. Yeah, Z's just un, <laughs> Z's Z unlikable. Sucks. But uh, no, he he clearly like wants to be something else, and he's just stuck in the role that he's in, and he tries to break free. Whether he does that in the greatest, you know, you know, the smartest way or the most likable way possible is up for debate. But uh, you know, he he didn't want to be what he was. He didn't want to be a a working ant. He wanted to be something else. He wanted to be a somebody, and you know, he got he he eventually got there by uh, whatever means necessary, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, they're they're slightly different, but I think Bugs Life has a is has a better message. Yeah, Jer- I think your point is like spot on. Like my thinking, ba- like what comes to my mind off of that is after these movies, like where these people go, like where these ants go. The worker ants, like, are still just going to have these shitty lives in theory. Like, I, I think they're still going to have to, like, just be... They're, no one's, like, happy they're going to go to this bar and, and just have this same shitty oppressed life in my eyes. Whereas, like, in A Bug's Life, they're all, like, they're all going to have a better life after. And it's just, like, more... You're happy at the end more so yeah, than pe- the other one. Like People still got to work <laughs> yeah, in ants. Like, 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 those jobs don't go away. Somebody's but in A Bug's Life, that. they... They have like tools now like, to like be we can keep way less all work. our food. We can yeah, keep all our just, food. <laughs> it's just a way more uplifting movie. It's just you're happy at the end. As the other one, you're just like, oh, I guess the bad guy died, but I, I don't know what's different. I think you might be giving the ants in ants a little too much credit. They seem pretty 
easy to please considering that they were throwing this revolution that was immediately squashed when they said, you can have one day off work. And they're like, hell yeah, we love this guy. We're no longer angry about having to work all the time. So Yeah, that made that made no sense. They might get over it faster than you're uh, giving them credit for, Ben. But uh yeah, that wraps up my list. Do you guys have any other any other final thoughts on Ants V a Bug's Life? Bug's Life is is a classic, honestly. It's uh it, it's it's definitely a must watch. Ants is a is and let, if you haven't seen Ants, if you're like me, and you <laughs> frequent Bug's Life and you've never seen Ants, check out Ants because you'll get some enjoyment out of it. But at the end of the day, Bugs Life is, is, a, is a great movie. It's, if, it's some, if it's one that you somehow missed, if you didn't watch it as a child or you've just never seen it before for whatever reason, go check it out immediately because you're going to like it. And, you know, if you haven't seen it in a while and it's on Freeform, watch the movie. My last thought is I'm never going to watch Ants again. And it now just clicked in my brain that I vaguely remember my first trip to Disney World when I was four, being at a Bugs Life ride, and it was like it's one of the only things I remember. Maybe that's why deep down, a Bugs Life is just going to be one of my favorite movies from now on. I'm just going to click back into that memory going forward. I'm happy we brought back your childhood memories. Thank you. On, on the Big Movie Boys podcast. <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, going back to a bug's life every now and then. Not as often as Bob, but, you know, every now and then. It's definitely one I'll uh, put back in the rotation. Yeah, Bob, are you going to watch uh, the McGregor fight tomorrow or a bug's life? Hey, I, if Freeform is airing the bug's life tomorrow, <laughs> Counter might have to wait. All right, well, that's going to do it for these two movies. Next week, we will be reviewing The Little Things, which is coming to theaters and HBO Max on Friday, January 29th. So if you're listening the week this comes out, this movie will be coming out this weekend. So you can look forward to that as part of our review for next week. Uh, and then we got we got a, a couple of good weeks lined up after that. So be sure to listen to we the end of sure next week's do. podcast. And uh, you'll be clued in as to what the, uh, the upcoming three weeks after that look like. So pretty exciting stuff. As always, we thank you for listening. And remember... We must dismantle the bourgeoisie. We'll see you next week.